If you're a longtime subscriber of the channel, then you know that I spent the first five episodes of it going into excruciating detail showing you how to build my standard dungeon tile. It's a very tedious process. It's not fast and it's not easy. Um, maybe you've wanted to make some, but haven't because you felt it wasn't worth the effort. Uh, and people tend to ping me with that. So this episode is how to do a very fast and very easy diluted version of those tiles by skipping some steps, using some other materials, and truncating some of the methods. Um, you'll see that they don't look as good, but uh, you know you get what you pay for. They take a tenth of the amount of time. So uh, uh, oh, and all the wall clip-on features that we've done on the channel still work perfectly fine. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, I still recommend that you watch those first five episodes, even though they're kind of hard to watch because I didn't know what I was doing back then with video editing and lighting and all that. But anyway, just to give you the context of what we're trying to do here, I do recommend you watch those first five. Uh, so anyways, let's get to it. Begin with double corrugated cardboard. If you don't have any left over from boxes or something like that, just go to Staples or Office Max and look for those tri-fold project display boards, the kind that you'd see at a kid's science fair project. Cut some two and a half inch squares. These are called foundations. Now, if you don't like the corrugation, you can apply cladding. This is just a very thin 60 pound cardstock, but any kind of paper, even printer paper will work. Just cut a quarter inch wide strip and hot glue it on. But I'm not going to bother with that for this project because the whole idea is about speed and ease. Next cut the walls. These are half inch wide strips, but make sure that you cut along the corrugation so that the waffling is exposed. This allows for a much stronger bond because the hot glue can sink into that waffle pattern and have lots of surface area to connect to. So then just cut the walls to the lengths that you need. Again, apply cladding if you want to. And I go ahead and base these in black with Project Source Matte Black Spray Paint. This can was a dollar and I got it from the Home Improvement Store. While that's drying, make the spaces. I recommend using medium chipboard. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick and very sturdy. I've used it in almost every episode on this channel and you can buy it through me as an Amazon affiliate if you like, using the link in the description below. If you don't want to bother, then a cereal box works okay as a substitute. Measure out and cut squares that are one and an eighth of an inch across. Then snip the corners. Base them in black. I brushed on acrylic because these are so light that the spray paint blew them away. Then take a dark gray and with a piece of kitchen sponge, stipple it onto all surfaces. Note that the more paint you bleed off before applying, the finer the speckle will be. Then do the same thing again with a lighter gray. Finally, hot glue the spaces to the tiles. We're doing this last so that we're able to get the foundation sponged. If the spaces were on there, it's basically impossible to, to get down into the crevices between them. Anyway, make sure you attach the spaces so that they are a sixteenth of an inch away from the edges of the foundation. For spaces adjacent to a wall, simply chop off enough to make it fit. There should be an eighth inch gap between the spaces themselves. If you do the math, you'll see that it adds up. And before we go to the table, I'd like to take a moment to thank all WCV sponsors. This week I draw your attention to Heroes Horde, which is an excellent resource for 3D printed scenery, including, but not limited to, all True Tiles products. So if you're into 3D printing, even if it's just to supplement your conventional crafting, it is worth a click to check it out and see what's what. So here they are with a room put together. And again, that exposed corrugation, if you want to, you can cover it up with the uh, thin cardstock. Only should take you about a minute per tile. Does not add notably to the time. But uh, 
Oh, there you go. So here, it, here's two rooms with the original style from the first five episodes and the simplified one we just went over. And you can see you have, uh, it's a little more interesting. I mean, like I said, you get what you pay for. Uh, if you dig these cardstock miniatures, check out episode nine to make them yourself. Uh, the speckle that I mentioned, um, again, the more you bleed off on the paper, the finer speckle you'll have, like a granite sort of effect. So you see here on the left and the right, pretty much the same. I think I used two different brands of grays, which is why they look a little different. Here's some, uh, it's a clip-on trap. Here's a clip-on metal door. So we'll pop that on there. Works because double corrugated cardboard is a quarter inch thick, so it meets our spec. Here's the evil portal from way back when. Throw a couple other things on here. Um, this is the what I don't know. I don't know what you call the swinging scythe or something, and some poison darts. Ah, secret door. Secret door fits. Works just fine. So yeah, if you, uh, I, I mean, I think I knocked out these easy tiles in under a half hour, and that includes all the setup for filming and everything. So they really do go quite quickly. So I am Wylock. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.